Like, because when war started in 2022, I was not sleeping that time. It was like 5 a.m. And like some things just change like forever. Or you cannot really fully express what you feel because like it's just a shocking experience. Like you cannot really explain to like people, for example, when some of your family dies, you cannot explain how do you feel it just because like it's just something you're trying to be positive to the most possible extent you can. But at the same time, like stories you hear daily, it's just crazy. Like how population of Ukraine decreased within like these two years, how people like ran away, the stories of people who like lose their like grandparents and like some of their pets as well or kids as well. Like the story that happened with the supermarket, I'm not very sure whether it's shown here or not, but like within one day, one huge supermarket in Ukraine was bombed and like around like a thousand people just died within like two, three days, four days. Wow. So and just some stories that you don't really hear out there or if you like search for them. Yeah. But I'm happy that I didn't like experience all of it on myself, that my family is safe to the most possible extent. But it's just people need to realize how serious it is because recently I saw a reel basically on Instagram where like there was a like reporter he was like filming the situation in Kiev and on his phone, but at the same time filming what is like on the TV. And basically he was saying like, oh, in TV, they're saying to you that everything is so horrible, but people in central Kiev are fine. They're like walking outside and they're, yeah, but like, do you understand? Like sometimes you have like 100 mis missiles like over Kiev at night mm -hmm. and like you cannot really sleep. And at the same time, yeah, we have a protection and Kiev is more protected than other cities. But you never know what's going to be tomorrow. Like, mm -hmm. this is what upsetting point is. So, like, we are trying to be positive about <laughs> what we have right now. But at the same time, people need to understand that nothing is over at all. And we're just trying to, like, keep up with, with what we're having at the same mm -hmm. time. Do, do you think... I don't know how closely you're following, like, the UK media coverage of it. But do you feel like um, there are substantial differences in the uk media coverage of what's happening versus what's coming out of ukraine like what ukrainian media is reporting i would say that uk media is one of the best media that we like if you compare with within the countries like uk is trying to highlight as much as possible and basically uk was one of the first countries who like suggested hostage to ukrainian citizens uh but at the same time i think on the global scale, a lot of Ukrainian news being like cut just because there is like Palestine, Israel war at the same time. Like there is a lot of experiences we had in our daily life that like catch this like screen time. So you cannot actually feed everything in it. But I think over time, people just get used to. Yeah. I will actually like tell you about one book I recently read that really correlated with my mind about like what's going on right now. But if we are like comparing the news, I would say one of the like sad things that I saw, like for example, Ukrainian film Twenty Days in Mariupol, it won Oscar. Did you know yeah, about yeah. it? Yeah. So basically, one of my friends was like in the team who was like on the stage, and uh, when they were filming like their speech about like how they're excited that they won the Oscar, and they were talking about like Ukrainian war. Because Zelensky was not allowed, for example, to speak on Oscar if he wanted to, but they didn't allow it because it's out of politics. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, we were having a speech there. Like, they were having a speech there about, like, five minutes, like, general average time for, like, explaining how they want the category, why is it important for them, why this film is, like, very important to see because you really understand how much Mariupol is, like, yeah. happening. And... It's actually a city in Ukraine as well, not that far from Donetsk, just for those who don't understand, in eastern Ukraine. And, like, they cut almost all of it. It was, like, only, like, 10% of 100% of the speech, wow. like, the director was talking. Just And Disney explained, like, who was, like, hosting thing, Disney. And they said, like, oh, our screen time was too long. We needed to cut it, guys. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, like last year, when the film about Navalny won, yeah. probably you know about Alexander Navalny as well, it's like 
sort of the opposition of like Putin, at least to some extent. There is a lot of controversial thoughts about him as well. Yeah. But sort of opposition. Like when his wife got the like a word, his her speech was like full and screen <laughs> last year. This is what really like sometimes <laughs> annoys me. In that particular speech that you mentioned, the Oscar speech, do you remember like kind of the substance of what was cut out? Or it's okay if you don't. Well, I didn't watch Oscar live. So basically the speech was heard only during like live stream, yeah. but on the like recorder and recording it was cut. So basically they were just saying how were they filming Mariupol? Because like Mariupol, the city like Kharkiv as well, it was a city that was like almost was fully bombed. Right. I have friends from Mariupol and like their stories even like harder to like even imagine because like there is no city at all. There is like a couple of buildings that were left. Right. And like they were filming this, like it's like documentary basically. Right. And filming about how like people's stories, how they were like filming to film itself. Like that's hard to film when you have like, you need to go to the shelter all the time. How like scary it is and like how Ukraine needs support for the scale. Like the people to understand what's going on. And they cut it. This mm. part, they cut it. Like, this is very sad because I understand, like, like Eurovision as well. They are trying to stay out of politics. But at the same time, it's almost impossible right now to stay out of politics. Yeah, yeah. This is the first Oscar in the Ukrainian history. And I'm honored, I'm honored. But probably I will be the first director on this stage who will say, I wish I would never made this film. I wish to be able to exchange this to Russia, never attacking Ukraine, never occupying our cities. <laughs> to I wish to give all the recognition to Russia not killing tens of thousands of my fellow Ukrainians. I wish for them to release all the hostages, all the soldiers who are protecting their land, all the civilians who are now in their jails. But I cannot change the history. I cannot change the past. But we all together, you, I'm on, I'm on you, some of the most talented people in the world. We can make sure that the history record is set straight and that the truth will prevail and that the people of Mariupol and those who given their lives will never be forgotten. Because Cinema forms memories, and memories form history. At the same time, if you compare Russian news and Ukrainian news, it is like two different stories. Yeah. Fully. Like, even if you subscribe to, like, Russian news channels and Ukrainian channels, like, at the same time, like, back in the beginning of the full-scale invasion, you would see the same situation described fully differently. Mm-hmm. So, so do you, do you follow like Russian? Do you, you look at I the Russian to, news too? I used to, uh, <laughs> just because to compare. I was really interested, yeah. like, what if people are using an excuse of like not understanding what's going on, on being brainwashed or being like manipulated? Like, let me see what's going on. Mm. Because, for example, even my uh, my brother's godfather, godfather. Uh, and Godmother, basically. Great movie, by the way. I'm very... Co I'm ve yeah, Godfather, <laughs> yeah. Godmother, I'm always confusing them. So they are living with their kids in Russia, but mm -hmm. we didn't talk with them for like 10 years or something. After they moved mm -hmm. there and all these things started happening, like a lot of people just changing their position very weirdly, even though they are like Ukrainians themselves. There is a lot of stories of people, of people who like really don't understand what they are saying sometimes. I'm not sure whether you watched like the interview of the like 
Putin when which what he was doing with uh, yeah Tucker Carlson yeah, yeah yeah I did see that one and I, I just saw like some moments of the video where he basically like sort of said that like Austria and Czechia they were like oh this they are like this is their fault that they were like sort of like invaded like there was like mm -hmm. sort of hints like that and uh, like that they couldn't protect themselves stuff like that so like I don't really understand how like people can really like follow this kind of thoughts like mm -hmm. in i just don't understand so before world war ii poland collaborated with hitler and although it did not yield to hitler's demands it still participated in the partitioning of czechoslovakia together with hitler as the poles had not given the Danzig corridor to germany and went so far pushing hitler to start world war ii by attacking them why was it poland against whom the war started on 1st september 1939 Poland turned out to be uncompromising and Hitler had nothing to do but start implementing his plans. Yeah, so in short, when I was invited to the podcast, I wanted to combine it with the fundraising and I chose the company that my friends own. It is basically in Ukraine, but operates worldwide. It's called Tvori Dobro, which basically translates into like make good deeds. And this is a charity organization that is helping women and kids who suffered from the war in 2022, 2023, 24, and right now, and the future. And they are making the fundraising for the needs of those who suffered from the war from uh, Eastern region, primarily for like kids and women, mainly for psychological support for those kids who are left without their parents because of the war, and they're making just like supplies of uh, medicine, psychological help, clothing, toys, etc. So basically, first need that you need. And we're gonna probably leave the link down below so you can have a look on their website or Instagram or social medias to like see their data yourself so you can be sure that there is like internationally recognized organization. Uh, also, as sort of like giveaway we wanted to do in order to like stimulate people to donate. Uh, basically kids, those kids I was just mentioned before, they made like a small workshop where they like done some paintings and one of the paintings and done together. And there is a painting with like Ukrainian symbolics on it and the name of the organization was like Ukrainian flags and everything. Uh, like this kind of a size of the painting, so quite big. Uh, that uh, was taken from all the way on the car from Ukraine, Kiev to here. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be like giving it away for a random donation. So from all of the donations that were made, starting from today to like, let's say a month's time, uh, we'll just choose a donation that's going to, uh, like based on the number system, we're just going to choose a donation randomly and send the painting wherever, whenever you want. Uh, for you as a uh, bonus can i can i just ask one is that because i have listeners that are kind of in all over the world all over the world so is that just for people that are in edinburgh no we can we can uh, if this painting got from ukraine i'm sure we can deliver it to you anywhere <laughs> to the to <laughs> new york city of course um and and so this is this is just to clarify this is an organization that's helping women and children in Ukraine right now. Yeah. That seems like a noble cause. 